This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by Purple. We regret to inform you that Donald Trump is back, and he's not going away. And this coverage is done completely as a, a warning and a sign to get ready because things are only going to get more and more intense going forward. Because after a pretty solid six-month break of Trump dominating the news, he is back. And he is taking the Republican Party wherever he wants it to go. We, of course, laugh at the buffoonery and the sometimes comically evil intentions of Trump. But it's also important to be aware of everything that's going on because he's just one person. But it's the nearly half of the country hanging on his every word that is truly scary. And there's no shortage of examples of uh, his followers going to extreme lengths to fight for this doofus. January 6th happened. Oh, yeah. It happened. Yeah. That was not great. Uh, so this is just more of a, hey, by the way, this guy's back and uh, gearing up for at least a three-year battle against not only Democrats and Republicans, but also potentially democracy in general. Yeah, so CPAC Dallas 2021 happened this past weekend. And aside from some typical absurdity like QAnon merch booths, attacks on big tech platforms where the end goal would actually result in more restrictive speech on those platforms, complaints and fear-mongering around social programs, Mike Lindell buying his own booth so that he could technically be a speaker, not from any of the stages, just from the booth space that he purchased. Yeah. And numerous failed attempts at comedy, like um, Lauren Boebert here. We're here to tell government, we don't want your benefits. We don't want your welfare. Don't come knocking on my door with your Fauci outie. You leave us the hell alone. And what appeared to be a chemically enhanced Donald Trump Jr., <sighs> even more so than usual, he yeah. decided to take a few jabs at Texas while in Texas. You know, Texas has always led the charge. Well, till about like a couple months ago, and then Austin sort of took over. Like, I don't know, guys. Like, Texas was leading the charge. You're still top 25. But we gotta work on that stuff, because those people have lost their minds. Right? Aside from all that. Yeah, I mean, he, uh, look. I'm not, I'm not here to judge, but he kind of seemed like he was on something. And my take is, you know, a lot of people think he's coked out of his mind. No. My take is that he is... He got uh, it from a doctor. Yeah, he, like like we've said about Donald Trump yeah. or other uh, not people a that, that I, I hear this way. These are prescription drugs. Yeah, I got the, this Adderall from uh, a doctor, yeah. and I'm literally crushing up probably four times the amount I'm supposed to take and yeah. snorting it. Yeah. But it's legal, and I got it from a doctor. Yeah. But that's what it seems like. He is sweating and just like... They're always like, it seems like they're not so dry. They're talking like this. It's just, uh, it's wild to see. Um, yeah, he's not looking well, even for yeah. him. Yeah, but look, what this CPAC really seemed to represent is that if there weren't before, there are some now clearly defined lines in the sand for what exactly the GOP, the Republican Party, conservatives are focused on going forward. First was, of course, the continued resistance to the vaccine and vaccinated people, where at one point, the crowd in attendance actually cheered for the fact that the country has not met its vaccination goals as new variants continue to spread. They were hoping, the government was hoping, that they could sort of sucker 90% of the population into getting vaccinated. And it, and, and it, and it isn't happening, right? There, there's a... Y younger people are well aware of what the risks really are. This obviously resulted in a statement from Dr. Anthony Fauci during an interview on State of the Union where he reacted to this moment saying, it's horrifying. I mean, they are cheering about someone saying that it's a good thing for people not to try and save their lives. It's almost frightening to say, hey, guess what? We don't want you to do something to save your life. Yay, everybody starts clapping. I just don't get that. I mean, and I don't think that anybody who is thinking clearly can get that. What is that all about? I don't understand that. Yeah. It's got to be just like so aggravating for doctors to just look at people cheering on the fact that yeah. people won't protect Especially themselves. Especially epidemiologists from this. after the last year and a half just and every every other day a new article from different locations throughout the country just being like, "Yeah, uh cases are spiking and there are deaths still happening and guess what? 99.9% .9 of those deaths are people who are unvaccinated." Take your chances, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, secondly, most importantly, is that Donald Trump is still firmly the head of that political party. Mm -hmm. And despite his two impeachments and a lost election, the GOP has not only failed to distance themselves from him, they are willing to sacrifice any of their traditional conservative values in order to hitch their entire wagon to Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, in just the past few weeks alone, 
Uh, Trump has filed lawsuits against pretty much every major social media platform. He's held multiple rallies, including a speech this past weekend at CPAC. And uh, at first, we just thought this was him just like milking whatever fundraising he could get out of like his remaining followers. Yeah, but, that would make uh, sense for him. With the full embrace of the guests and attendees at the largest conservative convention, it's looking like he's not going anywhere and will absolutely be running for president once again in 2024 or somehow sooner if he finds a way. I don't know. Yeah, there's been ridiculous theories peddled around conservative spaces for a while now, which claim that Trump will be reinstated as president as soon as August of this year. So a month. If, if everyone believes, if you close your eyes and click your heels together, Trump will be back in the White House. Well, they don't need to because there were flyers being passed around at CPAC in <laughs> Dallas with steps that people or well, I guess the government and conservatives in charge can take in order to make sure that this happens. And that kind of echoes a plan that was mentioned by none other than Matt Gates, where uh, one big step in this plan is that Trump would be elected as Speaker of the House. Uh, so then the story goes in the seven step plan uh, that uh, he impeaches Biden and Harris and takes back his throne, becoming president once again through succession. All totally by the book. Yeah. But all that nonsense aside, this CPAC speech was essentially his I'm back and I'm not going away, so fall in line or get the fuck out of the way moment. And CPAC in general seemed to be entirely locked into the idea that Trump was cheated out of his presidency and deserved it back. From the Washington Post coverage of the event, throughout the halls of the Dallas Hotel Conference Center, there were signs that Trump's false claim that the election was rigged is a central animating force on the right, one fueling extreme views. The leader of a group whose members were charged with conspiracy in the Capitol riot strolled the conference halls. A booth sold QAnon shirts referencing the extremist ideology based on false claims that has taken hold among some Trump supporters. And a man passed out cards detailing a seven-point plan to restore Donald J. Trump in days, not years. That shit was written like, uh, I, love, I love when people do this. Boomers do this a lot. It was written like in a way where you're trying to sound like you know what you're talking about, but you clearly don't. Like, you're trying to sound smart, but also sound like a villain. Just like, and hereby unto Donald Trump, uh, thusly, will be well appointed the way, president. The way it's written heretofore, specifically, is it, 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 it's like a, a good any good conspiracy. It has enough yeah. believability to it that a person reading it would go, all of those things can definitely happen, and sure. they will probably if, if people would just get off their ass. It's something I already want to happen, so it seems plausible and to me. And there are the steps I need to take. Uh, anyway, that article continues. A straw poll of the conference found nearly unanimous approval for Trump, with 70% of respondents saying they would pick him in the 2024 Republican presidential primary. Quote, there is really no distinction between the Trump movement and CPAC, said a Texas-based Republican political consultant who spoke on the condition of anonymity because he did not want to jeopardize his career. He said he voted for Trump in 2020, but no longer goes to CPAC because room for dissent with the former president seems so slim. During his address to the crowd Friday, Donald Trump Jr. drew raucous laughs as he criticized White House Chief Medical Advisor Anthony S. Fauci and Biden. But some of the night's longest, most thunderous applause came when a woman in the audience interrupted to yell, Trump won! A standing ovation ensued for nearly a minute. The former president's son grinned, nodding, and the crowd broke into a chant. Filling out Trump's speech Sunday evening, 18-year-old Matthew Zhao said he ho also hoped Trump would be back in the White House soon, though he believed it would probably have to wait until 2024. He said people did not set out to do harm on January 6th, but clashed with police who were in the way, adding he would welcome another storming of the Capitol if necessary. Zhao said, if it happened the same way, I'd probably show up myself. So... They're out there, and they're ready for another insurrection. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of talk of uh, doing more of that stuff at state capitals this summer. It's uh, yeah. So that's that's fun. A lot less security at state capitals. Not good, not good. Uh, but don't, look, what else happened this weekend? Surely there's something else that happened this weekend. Well, the USA basketball team lost twice to Australia. England lost. England lost. Eat my shit, <laughs> losers. <laughs> Uh, so sports was good. Yeah. Shohei Otani didn't hit enough dingers in it's the home run derby. It's not coming but, home. But, uh, you know, that's fine. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Billionaire Richard Branson went to space. And he floated around for a little while and then returned to Earth. Uh, in what Space. In all of what we attempt was, uh, or assume is an attempt to piss off Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk who are total losers who have not gone to space no, yet. him and Elon are cool. Elon posted feet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there <laughs> you Elon go. Elon posted feet to let everyone know that he and Richard Branson are cool. Yeah, but... Uh, Jeff Bezos, no longer my best friend. <laughs> Elon Musk Elon, is my Elon friend. Elon Musk is my best friend. <laughs> See, Elon Musk, to me, I feel like 
And this is a completely rational way of thinking. I am not shitting on Elon Musk for this reason. He, to me, seems like a person who is scared to go in a rocket up to space. Yeah, because I would he, be. Because he has his spaceship has proven that it can take humans up to space, no problem. Mm -hmm. And he's like, doesn't seem that interested in doing it himself. I think I saw something about Which he, is completely reasonable. I think I saw something about he's he interested in actually riding in uh, Branson's thing. Yeah. Because it is, it's kind I think, of cheating. reasonably safer than yeah, like, yeah, an yeah. actual rocket trip. Bezos, though, as you're all aware, he's going up later in the month, which like, what, 10 days or less from now. So, yeah. uh, you know, there you go. Again, uh, Branson, though, he didn't launch in a rocket from the ground. He was in a, in a space plane that was carried by a bigger plane. And then the, the bigger plane dropped the space plane and it launched from there, which like, yeah, I mean, he went to space, sure. If you want to call suborbital sp orbital space space, um, but he did it in a way that is somehow less exciting than a traditional launch. Although he did appear to be either terrified or constantly suffering from G forces in the videos, just like, yeah, it's not fun, and, and that, it's uncomfortable. That man is like seventy years old. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but yeah, sure, he went to space, and he did get to experience weightlessness for a few brief moments, and then he gave a speech that was meant to be inspiring. He said. To all you kids out there, I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship. If we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Yeah. Leaving out the part where you got to become a billionaire and spend an absurd amount of company funds in order to develop the ability to go to space for a few minutes. But you can do it if you put of, your mind to it. A lot of steps, but yeah, just believe in yourself. Uh, hey, look, we're shitting on this a little bit, and it, it's almost entirely because it's, it's just ridiculous to watch a bunch of billionaires compete to go into space when it's pretty obvious that their money could... and should be uh, better utilized down here on Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, we have a, a real soft spot for space travel. The tech that is developed and deployed through all these programs will actually find uses in the everyday lives of a, a decent amount of people someday. So, yeah. I mean, okay. The, the first space race was mainly about competing with the Russians and also building rockets that could blast entire countries off of the planet in minutes. But we also got cell phones and the internet out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty awe-inspiring to think that a bunch of scientists and test pilots were risking it all more than a half century ago and that the end result was the ability for someone to post Scooby-Doo Rule 34 porn whenever they damn well please. I mean, this space race, though, it's it's about billionaires trying desperately to leave the planet or just having a dick measuring contest. But it might result in something worthwhile. One day a furry could come in zero gravity, thanks to the innovations in commercial space flight being developed today. That's the next space race. Mm hmm. Anyway, we have some much lighter, more fun news for you in the second half of today's show, we promise. But first, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor for helping us with the most important part of our lives, sleepy time. Yeah. Doesn't seem like the world's against us for getting a good night's sleep this time of year especially. You got fireworks, parties, the anxiety of returning to the world, the heat of an unforgiving climate, the endless doom scrolling. Well, forget all that for now, because when you have a purple mattress, you can sleep cool and comfortable no matter what the world throws at you. That's because only purple mattresses have the grid. Its unique ventilated design allows air to flow through to help you sleep cool, even when it feels like a thousand degrees out. The grid is also amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips, no matter how you sleep. Unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, the grid bounces back as you move and shift, so you never get that I'm stuck feeling that you do with memory foam. Uh, this pillow is great. It is so great. Uh, they actually sent us uh, another one recently, yeah. and I was very happy to receive that as a surprise. Because your wife keeps stealing it. Not only was my wife stealing mine, we actually brought it with us when we did a staycation and accidentally left it at the hotel. Oh, no. So now it belongs to a hotel somewhere in the central part of the state. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so they I don't was, know what they got. I was going to reorder one, and then boom, another one showed up. It was yeah. like fate. But, uh, yeah, that's how good it was, was that I brought it on a little staycation because I was like, Hotel pillows, boo. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great pillow. Mm -hmm. now imagine an entire bed made out of that pillow. Yeah. And uh, yeah, by the way, you can try your Purple mattress risk-free with free shippings and returns. Financing is available too. Purple is comfort reinvented. Right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. Go to purple.com slash todaydaily10 and use promo code todaydaily10. That's purple.com slash todaydaily10, promo code todaydaily10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash todaydaily10, promo code todaydaily10. Terms apply. All right, now uh, back into the news. And we, we promised a fun one, right? Uh, well, how about a big old teddy bear walking across <laughs> the entire godforsaken country from Los Angeles all the way to New York City? 
That's nearly 3,000 miles going there on a quest for glory and clout, but also thankfully for charity. Jesse Larios, uh, who dresses up in a full-sized bear costume and goes by the name Bear Sun, has already done some pretty intense walking in the past, recently completing a trip from Los Angeles to San Francisco, as well as a journey from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, where he uh, raised money for autism research. Now, this time, he's in it for the long haul. He is Forrest Gump. I don't know how the hell he does it in that fucking thing. Yeah, and like previous adventures, he is obviously chronicling the entire thing on social media. We will leave links to his Twitter and Instagram below so you can follow along or donate. Gotta say, though, props to Bear Son, and uh, hopefully he is staying hydrated mm -hmm. and safe because he couldn't have picked a worse time to start this trip considering the entire west side of the country, not just the west coast, the entire west side of the country has been suffering from a record-breaking heat wave, and it it has to be even worse inside that bear costume. Yeah. It, it's very dangerous. Yeah. Anyway, the journey from L.A. to New York City is, uh, like we said, just sort of uh, 3,000 miles. And even if you were in a car, it would take you around 42 hours without stopping for food, gas, or sleep. Walking there would take an approximate 912 hours or 38 straight days. And that's with zero breaks. Yeah. Just walking nonstop at an average pace. So we're going to assume this is going to take uh, a while because Bear Sun is going to need to sleep, eat, suffer selfies with a plethora of fans and probably take multiple breaks throughout every day in order to not die from heat stroke or general exhaustion. Uh, this trip is raising money for multiple charities, including the Autism Society of, uh, for America, the National Breast Cancer Foundation, Active Minds, Villa Esperanza, and Environmental Defense. There's also a GoFundMe for the journey, which looks to benefit the Autism Society. We'll go ahead and we're going to make a donation for the cause. Yeah. Uh, again, you can follow this journey on his social media. We will leave links to everything, including the donation page, down in the description below. Uh, good luck and Godspeed, you silly old bear. Yeah, pretty intense. Starting in July. Just hitting the worst part weather-wise for the entire trip. Yeah. Probably going to, I mean, depending on how frequently he has to actually stop, might end up in New York when it's snowing, <laughs> like it, trotting through it's the a snow. a very long trip. Uh, anyways, another good news, an age-old problem that, that might finally get fixed if enough people get on board. And we're sure that at some point in your life, you became aware of the glaring fact that the amount of hot dogs in a package and the amount of hot dog buns in a package don't match up. It's a scam. This is obviously frustrating because it causes you to buy more of either product, and that might result in waste. Nobody wants to waste. Well, condiment powerhouse Heinz specifically Heinz Canada, they want to do something about it. And they've started an online campaign and petition to force the meat and bun manufacturers of the world to come to an agreement on how they will package each item so they can evenly distribute the right amount of prepackaged goods, resulting in the perfect pair-up for your summertime cookouts. No leftover moldy bread, no slimy bunless dogs, just perfect harmony. Can the world come together for this thing? Perfectly balanced, as <laughs> all hot dogs should be. That's what uh, Thanos was really going after the entire time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, as of the time that we filmed this, the petition had just over 25,000 signatures as it heads towards its goal of 35,000. And like we always do with these petitions, we must uh, head to the section where people can give their reasons for signing. Let's see what we've got this time. It's un-American to have this imbalance of wieners to buns. Every last wiener deserves to be stuffed into a bun. Plain and simple. Don't crush my soul and make me put the last two wieners on bread. What a savage survival situation it reminds me. Who are we? Plebeian Neanderthals? Even the cavemen agree. Match the carbs and the protein, wrote one user. <laughs> with another adding, we all have a responsibility to right the wrongs in the world. Yeah. However, uh, according to the National Hot Dog Council, which is real, there is a reason that the dogs and buns are mismatched, but it seems pretty outdated, if you ask us, uh, from Mental Floss, who explained the history that was laid out by the Hot Dog Council. Oscar Meyer, which led the charge into direct-to-consumer hot dog packaging, sold hot dogs by the pound in accordance with how meat is typically priced. Having 10 dogs that weighed 1.6 ounces each seemed like the ideal distribution of weight. Bakeries, meanwhile, have standards of their own. Buns and sandwich rolls are usually sold eight to a pack because the baking trays for the elongated buns are typically sized to fit that number. Two sets of four buns come off the tray, which is the reason why buns are often still attached to one another even when you open the bag. These standards were created independently of one another. Bakeries weren't too preoccupied with hot dogs when they were settling on a four-roll tray standard, and hot dog manufacturers weren't thinking about how difficult it would be for bakeries to break from their conveyor system to offer ten buns to a pack. But look, with hot dogs being so wildly popular for, I don't know, a hundred years or more, 
Isn't it time for a better way forward? I think so. I just can't keep buying 10 packs of buns and 8 packs of hot dogs to get an even match. I am going broke, and I don't have enough people to eat it. Yeah. Joey Chestnut will not answer my calls. Unless you're making exactly 40 hot dogs within, like, a, a week. Yeah. Something's going to come up short. And those bowl, those buns are going to get moldy. Yeah. And it's just a big bunch of food waste. And then you got to use sandwich bread, which I actually think is fine. It's mm -hmm. not, it's I don't not agree I, with you. It's not ideal, but I think it works just fine. Got to have the bun. There are people in the position saying that they're looking for a universal system of uh, hot dog length with bun length. But I also disagree on that. Yeah. yeah. I think the dog should go beyond the yes. length of the bread. I agree with you. Now, that way, if you want a little bit without the bun, you can yeah. get a little bit like that. Yeah. But speaking of uh, rampant consumerism, I made a, a trip to a place called Omega Mart this week. I brought back some gifts for uh, myself and Elliot. Oh. So, check, so basically, this is a, a big art installation. Yeah. What's the it's deal a, with this again? So it's a grocery store, and it's like this whole interactive art experiment kind of thing. The grocery store like shuts down. The employees freeze. Yeah. All the products are fake. You go. There's like a cooler you can go into, and it leads you into this into a whole different realm. Yeah. Uh, there's like a campsite that you can crawl through the tent and get to a different world. There's so much going on there. I think I saw it all, but I don't even know if I saw everything. Oh, my God. Uh, there's a giant three-story slide uh, somewhere inside. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on there, and all of it's very cool, and it's a lot of stuff that I hadn't seen before or thought of, which is like typically when you go to like a, you know, like a science museum. You'll, yeah. There's certain things where you're like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Freeze my shadow on the wall. Clap in a two. Sounds mm -hmm. fun. This place, it, it, it was actually pretty crazy. Uh, but I brought back some uh, some product from yeah. there. Uh, this is Corn PM. So this is soothing <laughs> nighttime corn for adults. They had a whole stand there. I've seen this on the internet. Yeah, so uh, they, we had that. Um, we got a pack of GOM. GOM is for everyone. GOM is banned in these states. It's <laughs> a lot of states. Uh, then I got, here's, here's this one's for uh, for Elliot. This is, uh, this is, this gum is Doomed Expedition. It's not going well. Arctic Madness. <laughs> uh, let's see what else here. It's also banned in a bunch of states. My I got God. a can of Y2K contingency sauce. Y2 mm. can. And uh, there you go. Yeah. And then, of course, that oh, here's another one of my favorites here. This is some laundry detergent. Done. Done. <laughs> and then uh, the one that I actually didn't know that they sold this, I just thought it was a meme online, but they I actually found it in the store. Uh -huh. It's a 96-hour <laughs> energy drink. <laughs> Those people are having a yeah. bad time. High frequency neuro awaker. Damn. Yeah. Boost productivity. Outpace your peers. Never sleep. So yeah, very cool place. Definitely uh, check it out if you have the ability to. But uh, yeah, it was awesome. I had a great time. Um, so I don't know. My weekend was pretty good outside of everything else that was going on. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it for today's episode. Please, if you haven't seen it already, check out our most recent episodes of Weekly Weird News and our most recent episode of News Dump. We'll be back with more tech news and everything else coming up soon. But uh, in the meantime, have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye.